If we're going to have a coherent and comprehensive approach to China above all, the U.S.-China relationship being the most far and away in the world, and every action we take diplomatically, militarily, uh, in trade, economically, you name it, should be filtered through a prism that requires us to a answer a question, how will this affect the U.S.-China relationship? And if you want a coherent and comprehensive approach, you want every tool that we can muster, and we want all of our allies and partners together with us. So again, certainly encouraging other countries to spend 2% of GDP to reduce the cost that we have for deploying our forces uh, in, on their soil and in their waters, but we need them with us. And so, for example, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, really more important geopolitically than it was actually in terms of what the economic boost to our GDP would have been, but hugely important. Again, if you're going to array countries uh, to firmly uh, deal with the increase in challenges from China, noting that, by the way, of course, China is not just our biggest strategic competitor, it's also one of our biggest trading partners. Some would suggest that when they, they have that we're in a, an economic war with, with China. Well, I think we're in the early stages of a tech Cold War. It appears that the tech uh, world is going to fracture somewhat. Of course, some of that's already taken place. The World Wide Web is not worldwide anymore. There's a great firewall of China that does wall off China from that. And by the way, I should note up front, I'd like to see this relationship be mutually beneficial. I want to see one in which we all uh, prosper from the relationship with the biggest country in the world and what inevitably at some point uh, is going to be the largest economy in the world as well. But clearly there have been actions taken by China that were not acceptable to the previous administration uh, and are not acceptable to a bipartisan uh, view in, in Congress, in Washington, and really throughout the country. So then what do you say to those who suggest, well, it's about time that a president like President Trump stood up to the Chinese, whether they agree with the tariffs or, or disagree, something had to be done to force China to play by the rules or play more fairly, if you will. No, I think actually the bipartisan consensus in America uh, reflects that view. And I, I think, you know, we had an assumption, I think, for quite a number of years and through a number of Democratic and Republican administrations that if you welcome China into the WTO, even though they don't meet all the criteria, uh, they will get enmeshed in a web of trade internationally and they will get more prosperous. And as that happens, they will become more open, more transparent, and more like us. And that perhaps uh, was valid, but somewhere in the midst of the Obama administration, I think people started to question the theft of intellectual property, the forced transfer of IP, the tariff and non-tariff trade barriers, the exclusion of a number of our largest firms, uh, Facebook and Google among them, uh, all of these gradually accumulated and have, have hardened into what truly is a bipartisan consensus uh, that we needed to be more firm with China, not provocative. And again, we want to make this a cooperative endeavor wherever we can. And I think we're in the midst of, of, of those kinds of negotiations. But there has to be real strategic dialogue between our two countries, uh, not just a trade agreement, as important as that is uh, to our economy and to our markets and really to the world. Do you think the Chinese want to make a deal? Oh, I think they do, sure. Uh, they're far more dependent on their trade with us than, they are, uh, than we are on our trade with them. Uh, they have to be worried about this tech fracture that's taking place, which, by the way, adds to other factors that are already uh, leading manufacturers to leave China and go to Southeast Asia or perhaps bring it home. Uh, rising labor costs in China have cost them a lot of uh, assembly line uh, manufacturing jobs. Uh, then you've also had the rise of the robot, uh, which means that they can come home to the United States. So we literally see onshoring and in, insourcing, if you will, to reverse the trends uh, of, say, a decade or more ago. Uh, and now you see a concern about supply chain, that if it's made in China, uh, that it may not enter the supply chain, certainly not of the Department of Defense or perhaps the U.S. government, and that will continue. So that's why I say the, the, we're in the early stages of what might be described as a technology cold war. Uh, again, one that I hope we could come to grips with and there could be a reestablishment of the kind of confidence that's necessary between our two countries in a macro sense so that we avoid this going farther.